let's go for a ride. We're doing a range test on the Ride One Up Rev One electric bike. I have a dual battery setup with a Luna Wolf 52 volt 13 amp and a stock battery which is 52 volt 19 amp. Let's drive around the neighborhood and add some miles on this e-bike. It feels a little bit punchier with the Luna Wolf battery, has more um, amperage on the BMS discharge, just a little bit more torque. Um, this is the first time I have it out with a dual battery setup. I bought the Amazon um, battery combiner, it was only about 46 bucks, 40 amp on the BMS, and it's supposed to take 48 volt to 72 volt. Got it hooked up inside where the controller is. All right, it's about two miles already from my home just to get here and miss T. I have a couple of things I've done already to it. Bought the Super 73 RXC, uh, making the ride a little an inch lower. So that's a great part, I think. I like lower bikes, lower to the ground. I popped in the main battery here, spray painted it, and the combiner is in here. And I added this Luna Wolf battery up here. So that's kind of what it looks like right now. Here we go. We're gonna go southbound, check out if there's a flood, and see if they fix that or not. Part of the Emerald Necklace Loop. Let's get it. Let's check our top speed, let's go. 35, 36. Can I get a 37? Nope, stops at 36 miles per hour. Looks like there weren't any, uh, Flooded bike paths, actually. I think they uh, they raised some blockage so that the water doesn't get in the bike path. So that's cool. We're making our way down to uh, Whittier area. We'll probably bike around there and then head back and hit up um, Santa Fe Dam, depending on our battery. Oh my gosh, ATVers. <laughs> ATV riders. That's fun. Where are you guys going? Wherever you guys are going, looks like fun. This is like a back road? Where does this back road lead to? <sighs> Environmental commitments for Whittier Narrows. Damn safety. Still at full bars. I wish this display showed voltage versus bars. This part is cool. Durfee Avenue where 19th Highway meets. They made a, this is a new bike path that goes towards Whittier Park. Take some pictures, take a break by the lake. All right, here's Lang Lake. Let's see where it would be cool to kind of just get near the water. Look at this duck, it has a red face. Oh my, I've never seen that. So this is where they have like a um, lantern festival where they release all the lanterns, uh, where me and Martin checked it out. I think it was around November. So that was cool, because uh, the event is like, I don't know, you have to pay like, I don't know, around 50, 60 dollars, but, uh, to get a lantern, but if you just bike around it, you get the same show, you know, uh, for free. 
most festivals are typically have like a uh, an entrance fee, but last time they didn't lock up Whittier. I mean, this area. How can you? It's very hard to kind of lock up this area to begin with. A very good find on my part. And we're gonna do that again this year once we know the dates. Here's the part where it normally would have flooded. But look how they, it looks like they raised this uh, enclosure, these concrete uh, blocks so that the water doesn't get in the bike path. So that part is always uh, welcome for, uh, it's a good thing for us uh, people who use this path. All right, we've gone about 24 miles now, and I still have four out of five bars. That's pretty good. This is something that I would like as a summer commuter, maybe take it to the beach, maybe get a third battery just for insurance, if I can, and backpack it. For me, it's not about the speed. It's just more about the range for this bike. Really nice cruiser. The one downside is it's not so good on hills, so there's a little bit of an incline here, so we're just gonna try to go up at it as we uh, approach Santa Fe Dam here. All right, here we go. Let's climb up the hill. Yeah, if you live in hilly areas, this is not the bike for you. I think you would be disappointed. We're only climbing about 18 miles per hour, according to this. And it feels sluggish. I'm already helping the motor pedal a little bit. And this isn't even like a steep hill. This is pretty gradual. This bike might not be good or great on hills, but really cushy rear suspensions, and that's what I really like about it. It scores really high on comfort. And it just looks aesthetically really cool, you know? I really like the uh, alloy wheels, it's a nice look. I wish they had, they have stronger motors for, you know, rear alloy wheels, but we'll just uh, have to make do with what's being offered for now. But look, look at how cushy this bike is in the shadow. Really? Cushy and low center gravity electric bike. More comfortable than the Volcon Brat, in my opinion. And uh, better quality brakes. These already have four piston and bigger rotors. And it's 52 volts versus 48 volts from Super 73 or the Volcon Brat electric bike. We have made it to Encanto Park. City of Duarte, uh, just biking around here. Looks like I've gone about 30 miles already. Still four bars on the battery. A little bit of a slide out. Pretty doable. I think there was like a walking path here somewhere. This park is real nice. I'd have a birthday party here. That's nice tennis courts and everything. Bridge. Man, I, I wouldn't mind living in the Wardy. Seems like it's a up and up. It's a gentrifying area, in my opinion. All righty, Iku. So it looks like we've gone 40 miles, and my battery finally got to three bars out of five left. So it's safe to say every bar is roughly, on the conservative side, is 20 miles. So I would say this setup could take me about 60 miles, 60 to 80 miles. Um, 100 miles, obviously you still kind of want to get that 20% remaining to be on the conservative side. So I would say 60 to 80 miles for this setup. That's freaking amazing. Well, that's gonna be in today's vlog, folks. Thank you for tuning in. Like and subscribe for more content. Check out the links in the description below for discounts on your e-bikes. This is E-Bike Adventure signing out. 
See you guys in the next ride. Peace.